Yo, Champion 1 Division 3. Good times indeed so far. Undefeated and undisputed. And I think, I think we've played fair here. I think we've played limited mechanics, really. I don't think anyone can dispute that. We've been jabbing, hook shotting, single jumping. I've been dodging in defense, but not a lot. I really hope that you guys can see that actually most of the stuff has been achieved by us getting open nets. And people say, well, that's because the opponents made a mistake. But then also they tell me in the same sentence that champ twos are amazing and never make mistakes. So I, I can't figure that one out. But anyway, maybe it's because we're forcing them to make mistakes with presence and that's one of the things i want to highlight today again we're in that deep net position so we know they're not following up because i'm looking at their second man there by the way so i get this open area and again watch this yeah everyone thinks uh, to be honest it was the right decision he had to jump there but uh all that came because you know there was a guy called something hammer you know uh, must be the i think he's some sort of coach in rocket league and he explains uh you know some of the stuff you see even at a higher level and uh, said you should never do what I just did there. But let that ball bounce off the backboard. But that's because no one plays. Oh, no, that was a nice shot. No one plays the positions like we do. So we're in deep net. So I can see the second man. I can see they've hit it off the backboard. And no one's following up. So why would I throw that away when I can use the free carry? To do an air dribble bump at a higher rank. Or you could, actually you could also drop the ball in low 50. Which we did there. Again, we did that last episode. We just dropped the ball and watched the miss. You'll start to see as you watch these series how how much it's the same stuff over and over. You see, I just put the ball around, go for the demo, teammates takes the shot. And so you can really see that we're just doing the same thing. So I'm not changing what I'm doing. Triangle defending into a demo because they're trying to turn instead of playing it into the corner. You can see I'm doing the same thing over and over and over. A system-based approach. And people say it's boring, but then watch the Grand Champ uh, free replay we did. You know, you can make it a lot more fun. You can add your flip resets in, in your aerial stuff. If you're so inclined, you can do that as you rank up. But I really don't recommend too much of that when you're in these kind of ranks because you you should learn how to play the game. One of the things that makes me laugh is people say, well, all the pro players are very mechanical. The pro players are extremely smart. There are a lot of mechanical players that aren't pro. There are a lot of mechanical players that aren't pro. But... You don't often see a lot of uh, fundamental players that aren't high level. That would be a better way of saying it. So there's there's thousands of freestylers that can't compete at the pro stage. What the pros are is they've got mechanics, yes, but they inherently understand the game. They know they they just get it. They just get it either by learning or through experience, and they've actually been critical about it. You know, some people just either obsess study things to figure stuff out or happen to be one of the people whose methods is correct i often think this about michael jordan michael jordan came in with his you know his fade away and stuff like that and he just so happened to have a perfect dribble package a perfect layup package a perfect like post hook you know post shot package that just so happened to be extremely high percentage I don't know how much of that was that he learned it or he just liked those moves. It could be a bit of both. So it's like stuff like that. Some people are doing things naturally. When you watch a pro player, you see them do these things and you think, like Zen's brilliant at inside position. I think he's one of the best at inside position and low 50s with the side of his car. Is it a learned thing or is it something that he's just, you know, figured out? I don't know. I don't know. But he had that base. And so... So, as far as his base of understanding so you can add your mechanics on top and i know he started out as a freestyler don't get me wrong but not many freestylers see the game the way zen does hopefully that makes sense so and do i think that being a freestyler is a great base for ranking up in rocket league it can be if you see it correctly it's like you know um it's like freak athletes isn't it a freak of nature athlete is a good base for pretty much most sports but not always like usain bolt tried to train at man united i don't know if anyone remembers this fastest man in history and he was terrible he was super athletic but he was terrible you've watched him play basketball in the uh, the all-star you know basketball thing he was terrible he was the greatest athlete like better than the nba players 
but he was he was not very good with his like hand eye coordination for example and he wasn't very good with his dexterity with his legs believe it or not because he's more built for power so being athletic can help you but it doesn't it's not always a make or break you would much rather have someone who's not an insane freak athlete but who's very technical for example a messi so you know people said he was too short to play but he's so technical he's got these great soft touches that you'd rather have him than the world's fastest player wouldn't you so anyway back into this so we're doing well here in this first game just by playing central trying not to actually attack things unless we know it's a very high chance for an outcome and we know that for things like that you know Dizo's low on boost now because Emrak just grabbed that boost. So we're looking for stuff like that as we play. So Dizo will grab that mid boost now. If you were being more aggressive, you would grab the mid boost there. But we don't need to because he's he's burned all his boost already. That's a great play. So we put it back into the corner. I am going to grab this. I know my teammate needs boost, but I don't want them to cross, cross me over. Oh, they're not in position though. But that's fine. But I didn't really want them to cross me over. That was bad for me. I, I should have done. Oh, you shot. Why did you shoot that for? Ah... Uh, that is my bad. Was that meant to be a double jump? Oh, yeah. I was trying to double jump there. The nose was lined up. That was meant to be a double jump start. I apologize for shooting on target there, guys. That's definitely the last one. That's definitely the last one. That was meant to be a double jump. 100%. I was trying to turn my nose and double jump. And that's why I flipped. My bad. Still, it was an open net, really. But no more of those. No more of those uh, open net finishes. We've shot. We've shot. No more shooting. So we're going to get this boost nice and early. Because as the second man, that is your responsibility to try and pick that boost up. I mean, I always try and grab it in solo queue as the first man. Purely because... Well, we know this guy's on boost here. Purely because your, your teammate often doesn't grab it. That's bad for me. That was really bad for me. We still know he's low on boost. I'm surprised he's sticking around. He could just grab that back boost. What the hell? And teammates flying in. Well, that makes it awkward. If teammate didn't fly in there, we probably would have scored there. Because that torso... They've still got no boost. They've just dove in. What the hell? They've got no boost. And they're just diving around there. They've got boost now because they went down the middle. Though. They missed a few pads. But that's probably why I took that challenge. Because I know they're probably on about 30 boost. Teammates on the outside of the ball. That's an amazing touch for someone in that position. Not something you really want to rely on. Good boost grab. And then just circle out if we know we're not going to get anything out of it. Block in the middle. Trying to put that side on. There we go. And then we can always turn away. If you know the ball's coming at you from the corner, I wouldn't necessarily sit side on unless it was grounded. I'd be looking more so to move with the ball. Hopefully that makes sense. Into the corner we put the ball so we feel comfortable. Because we know it's a low percentage shot. Which they are going to hit away from themselves. And struggle with same with the teammate gonna be a low percentage shot because they're gonna hit it away from themselves they're gonna struggle to finish it and it forced them to use all their boost and look at this rinse and repeat you know it's funny when we get to chapter two, you're, gonna, you're gonna really see some stuff because um yeah players are uh, I, I don't know i think i feel like it, i don't know sometimes i do wonder these things it seems like the, the game's gone mad everyone's just up in the air all the time Make a save there. Try and land on your wheels if you can into the net. But again, I, I now, I mean, we're basically high champ one. So I think double jump saves like that are okay now. I, I really do. Yeah, we're still not dodging to score goals. I mean, they got air dribbles. That's impressive. Unlucky on that clear. But of course, last man's too aggressive, too close to the play. And they missed the ball. Do your almost champ twos do that? Yes, they do because he's not moving in the right direction he's side on right oh they've gone so remember when i was side on and i say i use that because then i can turn into the ball or i can turn away well don't go side on and start flipping across the ball because you're not going to hit it are you because you're moving in the wrong direction the only way you should do that is if you're moving across the face of the net as like a first man or a second man and the ball's actually got a roll at you and you get like but it's at the corner area it's not central so your percent of hitting it should go up quite a lot. Open net. Let's have a look why that's an open net. Is it because second man dove into the corner? Yeah. Tell everyone you know. Tell everyone you know, guys. Stop diving into the corners. 
we've said it for uh, about seven years now. Don't dive into the corners on offense. Especially if you're going to dodge. So I go for a bump there, but I flick straight back because I need to see if my teammate actually had the ball. That should be a goal. There we go. Again, stay grounded. Good stuff from the teammate to put the ball high. It's actually a brilliant bit of control. You don't see that. Wow, you don't really see that at this rank. That's amazing. Great bit. That's how you should play with mechanics. Is you sort of control it to pull players out of position towards you. Because they feel threatened by your attempts. That's really good. We're watching here. We see Luke back off so we can take our time. Teammate was on the wall. That, that bad for me. Really bad for me, that is. I saw them on the wall. Too late. They turned there. And that then... So, oh, yeah, that was really bad. I missed the ball. Missed the ball. I was trying to cut across. But not with power slide. Bad handling there. All right, nice. We're going to get back. Grab this boost. Back into the center. Yeah, that goal's on me 100%. This guy's good. I love how he's mixing it up here. Fake jump. Touch. Fake. Land. Chart. I mean, people say, oh, you know, boring. But you can easily have to do what he did. That's, I mean, I'd recommend it because you're throwing so many fakes and so many different options that aren't real. Remember that thing about presence. So we're going to get back to presence. It's You want players to think you can do these things without ever needing to show them. Think about a horror film, right? What's scary in a horror film? Seeing the monster, aka a person dressed in makeup looking ridiculous, like a, a an evil clown. Or, not knowing where it is. Not knowing what the monster is. It's the anticipation that scares people, you see, in cinema. So, that's why, often in films, they drag out when you actually see the demon. Or in some films, you never see the demon. because Unless it's like a, a slasher film, you know, where someone is literally dressed as a clown. But, or like Michael Myers and stuff like that. But generally, in like ghost horror films, or even the, the, the most highest rated horror film of all time is Ringu, which is the Japanese version of the ring. And you don't see the, 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 the you know, the girl for ages in that film. You know, it goes for ages and ages. And you, you, you feel it, you feel it, and they build and they build and they build. And it's the anticipation that scares you. You don't know who these people are. You don't know what they're capable of. You don't know what they're thinking, what they're feeling. That's that's what terrifies people. And that's a psychological thing. It is it is true. It's the fear of the unknown. So when you're in Rocket League fight, people, they don't know what you're capable of. And they don't know what you're not capable of. So you use your presence, your car, to show them things and give them the idea, oh, I could do this, you know. And they go, can he do that? I better, I better defend and overreact just in case. But I can't do it, for example. So in Rocket League, your presence is your biggest weapon. That's what I say to people. Move into the play at Supersonic. Because they'll expect a challenge. And if you don't challenge, you're really going to mess them up. And that's going to cause a lot of... Uh, one, you know, you're going to keep giving them this anticipation that something's going to happen. And it never does. Which can be really weird for people. Uh, and two... Oh, wow, we're already champ. Uh, we already did four. Well, that's the... Uh, well, but two, you're going to make them think that you can do this stuff. So you keep using your presence to fake, move into balls, move out of balls, and you will really, really scare people and get reactions that you want without ever having to show them anything. And when you flip through things, they realize you're human and you can miss. If it bleeds, we can kill it. Thank you for watching, everybody. Look after yourself and peace out. Peace, peace.